I see a lot of people not knowing what armor to keep and being misled in what armor to farm. I narrowed down my armor sets to be able to hit all of the most important mods with the least amount of armor. This will get your armor ready for Beyond Light. Hey gamers, welcome back to the channel. After the announcement of sunsetting, I was looking at my armor sets and wanted to do some cleaning. I wanted to hit all seasonal mod slots with the least amount of armor, so I could then masterwork that armor. This is going to be very useful for some of you who don't really know where to start with armor or need help knowing what to keep, what to look for, and how seasonal mods work. If you know most of this, then this video might still help you with understanding some nice builds for the seasonal mods and hopefully help you tweak your builds for Beyond Light. So before we get into the video, I wanted to quickly acknowledge that everything could change come Beyond Light. In a past TWAB, Bungie has made some remarks saying seasonal mod slots is going to be moved to a yearly mod slot. Currently, we have a seasonal mod slot that allows one season before, the current season, and one season after. If this change does go into effect in Beyond Light, I'm very curious if it will affect past armor, so just keep that in mind. Also, as of this video, Bungie has not made any statements on Beyond Light changes, so keep up to date on that and check the pinned comment as I will post anything that might affect this video. There is also some feedback arising regarding the armaments mods and other race related mods, so be wary that these mods might be changed or removed from the game. Anyways, let's get you into creating the best armor loadouts in the game. Seasonal Mods When released, they were a pain only covering that season, but after the change, seasonal mods would cover the current season and the cover the season forward, and also one backward. So let's look at all the seasons in the history of Destiny and go over this. We have Season 1, The Red War, Season 2, Curse of Osiris, and Season 3, Warmind. All these seasons had no seasonal mods and will be ignored. Season 4, or Season of the Outlaw, was Forsaken. This contained the Taken mods from the Last Rush Raid, these are the Armaments, Barrier, Invigoration, and Repurposing, but it also allows a slot of Transcendent Blessing, which is a weird because it's still a consumable upon use, so we're just going to kind of ignore that, but otherwise the Riven's Curse mod still drops on the Reverie Dawn gear. The only armor piece we'll be talking about in Season 4, Saken, is the Last Wish armor as it will be brought up in Power to avoid Sunsetting. So recap, Season 4, Forsaken, Last Wish armor with Taken mods mainly. This armor can slot Season 3 mods, which was Warmind and had no mods, but can also slot Season 5 mods. Season 5, Season of the Forge, has mods containing the Fallen Raid mods from Scourge of the Past. The armor we care about here is the Scourge armor as it is being brought up to avoid sunsetting as well. This armor can also slot Season 4 mods, aka the Taken mods, and Season 6 mods from Season of the Drifter. Well, Season 6 had zero seasonal mods as it was just Gambit Prime. No mods makes this season worthless. So let's look back at Season 4 and Season 5 mods. Both armor can slot each other's mods, and both raid armor is being brought up to light. So what should you keep? I keep one piece of Last Wish gear if you can. You can keep Scourge gear, but Scourge is going away, so Infusion won't be as easy if you instead go for Last Wish gear, which will remain in the game. I have one Last Wish piece in every slot on my characters, all masterworked for Void besides the class item. This is because Void is probably the best element as it covers grenade launchers and snipers right now, and element doesn't really matter for the seasonal mod slots for Taken and Fallen. You'll see I usually always have a solar class item as recuperation is my favorite perk for the orbs, and also solar has the enhanced bomber, enhanced ashes to assets, two of the best class item mods. So that is the first armor set, Last Wish or Scourge of the Past if you would rather keep one of them. And I have it right here, I removed all my universal ornaments on my armor to make it easy for you to see what seasonal mod they can equip, so bear with me with my ugly hunter. Let's go back to the seasonal mod timeline. We got the Fallen and Taken mods covered from Season 4 and 5, and Season 6 with Season of the Drifter, and as we mentioned before, has zero seasonal mods, so that takes us to Season 7. Season 7, Season of Opulence. One of the best seasons, as some proclaim, has the Opulent mod slot, which is kind of weird. This mod is available on opulent gear from Menagerie and some others, but mainly the Leviathan Raid as its light is being brought up to escape sunsetting as well. This mod slot can hold high mods like the Taken and Fallen counterparts, but it can also hold all the Leviathan mods from year 1. Since the Leviathan is going away, the hive mods are really what we're looking at here. The only elements that affect this mod slot is for the Leviathan mods for the abilities buff of 25% and the grenade recharge on super. So if we want to use one of these armor pieces, we would also be able to slot Season 8 mods, which is Shadowkeep, and then Season 6 mods, but Season 6 mods don't exist, so why would we do that? So if instead we move this section over to Season 8, 
Shadow Keep, we will be able to hit Opulent Mods, Undying Mods, and Season of Dawn Mods. So let's look here. Season 8 Shadow Keep contains a mod for Nightmare Hunts and Garden of Salvation. This mod slot is available on the Moon Armor and some others, but mainly on the Garden of Salvation Armor which is being brought up to escape sunsetting like the others. This mod slot can slot Nightmare Mods and some Garden Mods based on your element, but also has some generic mods you can get on any element. Main mods that are used is the Enhanced Relay Defender mod that can go on any element which buffs your damage when near a Relay Tower in Garden of Salvation. The other Garden mods are hardly used if ever. The only Nightmare mod used really is the Supreme Nightmare Breaker mod on Solar Armor for the season. This mod allows shields to be broken much easier in Nightmare Hunts, and when it comes to Master Difficulty, this mod is almost a must-have. So in short, this armor piece is perfect to have in the same setup as the Last Wish gear. One armor piece across the board, and then a Solar class item. You can stick with all the Void here, but if you're on Hunter, you could opt for an Arc chest piece with the Heavy Machine Gun Reserves, due to the popularity of Xenophage for boss DPS and Garden. Otherwise, you have a Solar class item whenever you need to use a Supreme Nightmare Breaker mod, but you also have all the other mod subs available for the Enhanced Relay Defender mods, or the Hive mods, and you will also be able to cover Season 9, the Dawn mods. Season 9, Season of Dawn, introduced the Charge of Light mechanic which has been expanded upon. If we stick with our Season 8 armor, the Garden of Salvation armor, we will be able to slot the basic Charge with Light mods, including Taken Charge, Shield Breaking Charge, Empowered Finish, and High Energy Fire. The other Dawn mods are elemental based. If we look at the elements, we will see that only a couple are really popular. Arc has some expensive mods that are used in very specific builds, but as said before, we might not have an Arc piece on our gear since we most likely are running Void. So let's ignore those and come back for our Powerful Friends mod later. The Solar mods are again not that very popular with the two Grenade mods, but then we have the Blast Rays and Charged Up mod, which could see some use. Luckily, we do have that Solar class item I said before, saved, that can slot these low cost mods if we do need them. The Void ones are easily covered on our gear since we always have Void elements all the time, but the Void ones just aren't that really great. Some people use the Protective Light mod, but the others are just weird. Stacks and Stacks does see some unique use, but again, we have plenty of Void Armor if we do need it. So that's Dawn. It introduces the Charge of Light mods, but doesn't get too fancy. So let's look at our Shadowkeep Garden of Salvation armor. This armor can cover Leviathan mods, Hive mods, Garden mods, Nightmare mods, and Charge with Light mods. A lot of coverage here, but I mainly use this armor for Garden of Salvation, and then use the class item whenever I need Hive armaments else I might slap on Supreme Nightmare Breaker on my class item whenever I do a Master Nightmare Hunt. So let's move to Season 10, Season of the Worthy. The Warmind Cell Season. These mods are so much fun, but most of the good Warmind Cell mods come on Void Armor. As mentioned before, we miss an Arc Seasonal mod slot for Dawn, and that's where Powerful Friends exists. So here's where we get creative. This season can cover Dawn, Worthy, and then Season of Arrivals mods. The Arc mods and Arrivals are by far the best with Lucent Blade and Swift Charge, and a strength version of Powerful Friends called Radiant Light. So to hit the Seasonal mods, I recommend having a full set of Worthy Armor, which you hopefully have, or kept the Season Pass armor from that season. The armor from the Season Pass, and this goes to all seasons, in the higher ranks past rank 37, has insane rolls and I recommend you always keep it. If you don't have the armor, you can get lucky with the Ingrams this season, as they will still drop Season of the Worthy Armor, but they're definitely rare. This whole set you want to run is going to be on Arc, with your class item again on Solar. This allows you to slot all the Arc mods from Dawn with the Charge of Lights, Worthy Arc mods, which aren't really that great, but you also get Global Reach, and then Arrivals Arc mods, which are really good. I usually prefer running Lucent Blade with times 2 Sword Reserves on my chest piece, as swords are just amazing right now. I combine this with the ways to get my Charge with Light, and I can just use Fallen Guillotine all the time. Now Daystrix, didn't you say that Void Worthy mods are really good? And like the only good Warmind mods? Well yes, I did! But guess what? You can run Season 10 Worthy mods on Season 11 Season of Arrivals armor. Season 11 Season of Arrivals Season of Arrivals goes back to the Charge of Light mechanic and builds on it. This armor set I got from the Season Pass which drops with the nasty rolls I was mentioned before. I used this armor as my Rome armor, or in other words, this is the armor I always have on unless I switch up my build. The only exception is a class item which I will get into. 
So what mods do we want here? Well, our arc mods are covered from our Season of Worthy armor, and that class item also covers the one solar mod we might use. We also mentioned we needed to hit our Void Warmind cell mods as they are insane. Mods such as Power of Rasputin and Warmind's Protection are just amazing. We also don't have the Void mods in Season of Rivals covered yet, even though they're not really that amazing, so Void is where we're going to start. I recommend running all Void, even class items, straight down on all the Season Pass armor you get past rank 37, or if you farm a better roll. These are great rolls on the armor and running Void allows for the Seasonal mod that are some of the best, and then Void allows for the Grenade Launcher Sniper's Hand Cannons, which are again some of the best. This armor is my go-to, I don't want a specific build armor set. The class item I opted for is Void as well, as we don't have a Void class item yet and is great for that oddball perks. I usually run a Solar class item from Season of the Worthy, as I like my recuperation. I usually run Power of Rasputin, Global Reach, Taking Charge, and High Energy Fire on these, since we can equip some of the best mods. This is by far the best set, and going into Beyond Light, this should, again this is still up in the air, cover Beyond Light mods. Lastly, I wanted to quickly touch on PvP armor. I usually use my armor with the best recovery or intellect that's void in PvP, but I have a void and arc class item from Season of the Worthy that allows for the slot of powerful friends with double pump action, and a void class item with double remote connection with a variety mod. Otherwise, you should slash can have an armor piece solely dedicated to PvP, as the seasonal mods are more up in the air for PvP. But I'd say if you really want to narrow it down, Season of the Worthy mods are the best pieces to have for PvP, since they can slot the Powerful Friends and the Radiant Light mod for a free plus 20 and a stat. So that's my armor. I have one Last Wish set for the Taken and Fallen mods, one Garden of Salvation set for the Hive mods, Leviathan mods, which won't be that important, Garden Enhanced Relay Defender, and some Intro Dawn mods. Then I have a full Arc Worthy set for coverage of all recent Arc mods. Then finally, my Rome Void build from Arrivals for Void coverage of Worthy mods, Arrival mods, and hopefully Beyond Light mods. Hopefully this video laid out a nice demonstration of how to hit all the mods with the least amount of armor and helps you learn what you should be keeping, farming, and masterworking for Beyond Light. The mod system is kind of janky now and we shall see if it gets affected in Beyond Light. But until then, if you can acquire these sets, you can get some insane armor pieces that you can quickly swap onto in a play session. Mainly the armaments, I would say, are just the best. Otherwise guys, let me know how you tackle your armor sets and what you thought of my video and any suggestions or tips you might want to add for those looking for the best armor in the game. I usually only keep armor above 60 base stat rolls, but again, you should be keeping all that armor from the season past rank 37, which is higher than 65. So go to farming, get these sets built, and you'll be ready for whatever hits us and beyond light. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you gamers in the next one.